okay, yeah. So um I I think um so sometime in my SS2, I think 2009, my my dad passed on. Yeah. Yeah, just after my 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 third term examination, my dad passed on and where we were living at at the time, we were living in Worry Delta State. You know, I grew up in Worry Delta State and I was what you would describe as a potential motopark chairman in the making. I became very notorious. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I became very notorious, very stubborn. You know, I became very, very notorious. And so my mom would pray for me. I'll come home very late. You know, my dad, I was, it was both the frustration of losing my dad and everything, you know. Oh. So it was very terrible for me. And then I was preparing for my work in SS3. I was, I was really following bad gangs and misbehaving. So my mom would pray for me and pray for me and pray for me. So one day she made a statement. She said, it's only Bishop David Oyedepo that can raise this boy for me. <laughs> so she said it, and my uncle's head, and they were like, ah, how do you mean? She didn't answer them. Some other day, some other time, she now mentioned the thing again. So it became a normal statement. It's Papa that will help me raise you. It's Papa uh, that will help me. So I don't know where she, she's not, she's, not, she's never explained where she got that from. Because she was not, remember, she was an Anglican, you know, but she kept saying, it's Papa that will help me raise you. And then she told me to go and write the entrance exam for Covenant. So I wrote and I got admission. I entered Covenant University. And I was, I was, I still had the old character with me. I mean, in 100 level first semester. And I didn't stay long for first semester. It was just a month because I came late. I came in November. So when I resumed in January, they said the um, bishop was coming to address us. This was 2011 January. So he, but he couldn't come because of time. He finally came, I think, in February or March. I can't remember. <clears throat> and then he came the day he came it was some i i still remember it like yesterday like i never heard somebody somebody talk with so much authority like it felt like i just found what i've been looking for all my life because uh, i even me myself i didn't know what, what i was looking for i didn't know why i was doing what i was doing mm -hmm. right but he stepped on the podium and the first thing he said was you must identify your identity your your individuality in the race of life because those who follow the crowd they get lost in it and i'm like wow you know and then he began to say 30 children do not play together for 30 years he just kept saying things and i never had somebody I, it was like i saw wisdom on two legs like, <laughs> what am i hearing and i was shaking at the back seat and when he was done he said there's a young man yeah there's a young lady here you want to say yes to jesus and that was how i ran out uh, you know and from from that time on from that mm -hmm. time on, it has been in pursuit of purpose. Uh -huh. It has been in pursuit of, and this was 2011, wow. 2011. Wow. And so it's 13 years now. So since that time on, it has been in pursuit of purpose. <laughs> that, that's very interesting. I, yes. I, I believe, you know, when the Bible says the steps of the just, they are ordered. God has a way of just organizing the events of our lives mm. and, um, at such seasons, they may not make sense. We may even be wondering, why am I here? Why am I doing what I'm doing? But everything is working together ultimately to achieve his, 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 his main aim in our lives. Yes. So, uh, I'm, I'm glad. So it was, it was a good thing you, you collected the certificate of purpose from Covenant. <laughs> you got to be a from um, uh, Benson Daosa, BIA. Yes. And, and it was actually part of what affected it because. Even me, they chose the department for me. They chose the course for me. Because I wasn't even ready to go to school, you know. They just said, right for this one. And I just went. So when I got to, when I got to Covenant, you know, we had this compulsory course. And it became my favorite co um, course, um, subject. Um, TMC. TMC, Total Man Concept. Total Man Concept. Man, it became my favorite. Like, I did that thing for two years. And I said, mommy, I've discovered my purpose. I shouldn't be doing engineering. <laughs> No, I know what I want to do in my life. I want to transfer. I'm good now. I'm good. <laughs> Papa has trained me. I'm better now. <laughs> you know, it was such a beautiful experience. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. I'm, I'm glad. So, uh, so now having to go through Covenant, then you, you left for BIU. What, what, After three years. What happened? I transferred to BIU because what, I what didn't happened? want... Okay, so I didn't want to continue in Covenant University. I didn't want to continue in mechanical engineering. Okay. And they said, okay, it's easy to go down. I, so they, I applied for mass communication. What happened was I was looking for the closest discipline to my divine calling. 
because mm. being in the engineering faculty, um, um, be, being in the from College of Science and Technology, and then going to make engine building, I, I just felt like a square peg in a round hole. Mm. You know, I wasn't feeling for and I felt like time time was going. I needed yeah. to start pursuing what I had to pursue on time, you know, and I went to meet some lecturers, some mentors, some people, and they said, oh, you can go back to Mass Como, we can do it for you, you can go and start, because they look at my WIAC result, and they're like, oh, with your WIAC result, what you have, you can go to mass communication, but mm -hmm. you cannot you cannot go to theater arts because you need to write YAC again, you know. Mm -hmm. But you can do mass communication, and then they now ask me, would you want to go back to hundred level <laughs> while your mates are going to four hundred? Like, ah, in the same school, I said no, I won't, I won't be able to. <laughs> so that was what happened. I'm like, they gave me the option, you know, they gave me the option. Yeah. You can go back to hundred level mass yeah. communication. And pursue I, your dream, I, I, but I your like friends. Purpose. I like purpose, but not to that extent. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I can pursue purpose in another school. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, no, 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 I'll pursue it in another school. So that was how I transferred. So I didn't even write jam again. It was a transfer certificate I took from Covenant okay. to BIU. Then I went back to 100 level in Benson in Dahosa University. Wow, wow. That's that's how much your drive to fulfill your ultimate assignment came on you that you could trade those years yes, just yes, to yes, be yes. in the place that you felt you were called to be. That, that was very extreme. That was very brave. Yes, how yes, yes, yes. How, was, was, how did you deal with that personally, emotionally, mentally? Having to, you know that you should be wrapping up here, but you are going to start off first just because you want to be in the place God has called you. I, they, I didn't deal with anything, to be sincere. I didn't deal with, I was excited. <laughs> Like it was my mom dealing with stuff. I think my mom, that question was my mom. How did she deal with it? How did my siblings deal with it? But me, I was excited. I was fulfilled. Wow. I mean, from from my first day in class in 100 level, I remember the first day they addressed 100 level students. The moment they were done, I, I passed an announcement to the woman that somebody wants to address this to the 100 level students. And they were wondering who it was. I stood up and I preached. That's how excited I was. I was born. so they knew me in BIU. I was a pastor from day one. Like I mean, I was fully excited. I didn't deal with. There was no mental pressure. No, my friends called me like when they were graduating. I was in two hundred level. I was happy for them. You know, I was happy for them because I knew that no matter how long I had gone in the wrong direction, it's never too late to turn back and start. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes, that was very bold. That was extremely bold. I was just thinking about it, I'm just wondering how I would have dealt with it if I was the one. That's been quite, quite, um, quite a huge move. Well done. Yeah, That's true. Yeah, 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 true. To, 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 to feel like three years and starting again. That's how purpose can drive you to extreme lengths. That's yeah, but I was, but I was so excited to be, to be studying business administration because at that point, um, God had given me the privilege to see how multifaceted my work for Him was going to be. Because everything I'm doing now, okay, now this is for real. January. 2013 january 2013 papa came to chapel to preach it was a thursday service and i had written down all my plans from movie production to uh, from movie production to authoring books to con convening the meetings like the purpose conference purpose crusade to having a landed property called Purpose View, where I will have secondary schools. Every vision, I wrote it down on paper with biro. Like, I tore it out. It was on a book. It was on a book. I tore it out. And then there was a pastor then called Pastor Yemi Davis, I think. I don't know if that was his name. But he came with Papa, like yes. an advanced man. And then they were at the back seat of the car. They were leaving. And I ran. I blocked the car. That was how I was. I blocked the car. Then they were like, ah, who is this boy? That I blocked the car. I said, sorry, sir. So the pastor called me to come and I said, God gave me this vision and I want to give Papa. So I gave Papa, I don't know if Papa even remembers, <laughs> but I gave, I gave the vision to the man and Papa, the glass was wine. And Papa looked at the vision, looked at it, they wind up and they left. And Papa took it, you know. And it's funny how 11 years after, almost every one of them is manifesting. Praise God, praise God. That's, Hallelujah. That, that's beautiful. Awesome, awesome. So, so now, now let, let's, what now made you, having gone through your experience at Covenant, the mechanical, you got through to the business world in BIU. Now you try, you now, how was the transition process into comedy, acting? How did all of that evolve? Wow, very, 
This is a very beautiful question. Okay, so I think at some point in life, there are facets or aspects of our destinies that choose us. That and we don't choose them. Yes, we don't choose them. They choose us, you know. There are facets of our destiny that chose us, you know. Um, comedy, I never... You can't... See, I'm... Sorry, I'm over mentioned. I carry the spirit of my father, Bishop Wedeko, you know, and he's very comic, but I don't know how you'll be under Papa and be seeing comedy as a vision. <laughs> <laughs> with, with respect to every comedian I know that submits to Papa, right? <laughs> but I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't picture comedy. I never envisioned comedy. I never thought about, I never thought about comedy, you know, I never envisioned comedy and I never saw myself being a comedian. You know, all through my stay in convent in Benson Dawson University, I was a pastor. So imagine all the students there, they called me Pastor Femi, Pastor Femi. I was a pastor, like, you know, and I I never envisioned me becoming a comedian. So I think I stumbled into comedy because I was I was okay, I made people laugh, but I didn't think so. I didn't think it was Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Okay. okay, so I didn't think it was something that was going to become a path for me to follow. You yeah. know, maybe it could complement my preaching. It could complement my sermons. Once in a while, we have like um, comic reliefs. You know, mm -hmm. I thought about that. Maybe once in a while, we have like comic comic reliefs. You know, and all. But I never, I never thought about, I never thought about um, me doing comedy as a path. I don't know if you get me, sir. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, I would explain. I would explain how comedy happened. I would explain how comedy happened for you to understand. Now, <laughs> I'm in Benson Idahosa University. I'm a pastor, and in Benson Idahosa University, there's an attachment to the university. It's called All Nations for Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a Bible school, yeah. sir. Those, those people are comic. My God. <laughs> Those people are in the cave of Adulam. They don't have ah, some of from Cameroon, some are from Uganda, different people from different countries pursuing God. Mm -hmm. They are adding it, it just happens spontaneously that they are comic in their approach. The way they greet themselves. You know, mm -hmm. man of God, sir, my God, my God, my, there's fire on you now. I see fire. I'm like, what kind of greeting is this? You know, the way they greet themselves, the way they eat food, the way they order food. In the, if you're on the queue with them, the way they will order food. You know, you hear the flesh is weak. Woman of God, can I can I replenish? The angel said to Elijah, eat. And I'm like, what, what kind of what kind of is this how to ask for food? You know, so I I kept enjoying those people. Like I enjoyed what they were doing, yeah. and then sometimes. Sometimes when I'm when I am I, when I'm in the hostel, we 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 kind of mimic what they do, you know. And then I came out of I came out of school, and I used to make films, short films. Now in Commonwealth University, I made a short film called The Sacrifice, you know. And then in Benson Dawson University, I made short comedy movies, short films, you know. But I didn't take it as a part. And then um, what happened was I went for a minister's conference. And it was titled Minister Without Blemish. It was to Johnson Suleiman in Auchi. So I attended and they brought a guest, a guest minister. And he was talking about how different um, false prophets were rising. And he was trying to expose their schemes. So he was giving different stories. And the audience kept laughing. And he kept saying, I'm not joking. This is, this is not, I'm not doing comedy. You know, but the things he was saying was funny. So I'm like, the schemes of these false prophets are actually very, very comic. You know? And I, I, I thought about it that, oh, because I've been a writer from time. And I felt like, oh, you know what? This could be stories. This could be raw materials for scripts. So I coined out, I coined out the name, the character name, Pastor Nebu from <laughs> Nebu <Nebuchadnezzar>. <laughs> Yeah, so okay. it was a man of God who God actually called, but later missed it because of the pressures of the world, you know? And then I coined out that character, so I did some episodes. And it was one of the episodes I did, I later did in 2021 that blew up so it wasn't like i sat down and i said i want to do zwala kate what happened was i was i think i was giving prophecy to a, a, an orange seller like a, a pastor who has gone to 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 evangelize all through the day no soul no food and i was hungry 
So I began to give fake prophecy to an orange seller, a banana seller, and then I was picking that tongue. So I was, I kept saying it's all I didn't know. So when I posted the video, the video was going viral, and then people kept commenting one word, Zwanakate. So I was asking my colleague, I said, what is Zwanakate? He said, you're the one that said it now. I said, me. So I always watch the video. And that was when I heard Zwanakate. I was like, oh, I said this. Okay, so this can be a catchphrase. And that was how I said it was the people who chose the phrase. I didn't see that midday to write Zwanakate. I just spoke in tongues, and then they cut that one. So that was how I wrote it out, and then it just became a very, a very... And that, became, that became like the, another explosive... Uh... That became another exp explosive platform for your, for, yeah, your, for your work. Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, 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 and the, way God, the way God blessed it, you know, there was a, there's, there's an experience I had, and I feel people are going to learn a lot from mm -hmm. it. So I attended an all night, um, and the man of God, my man of God, led a prayer point. And, he, and the prayer point was so touching. I remember very well. This was in 2020 or 2019. You know, it was an all night. And he led a prayer point. He said, we are going to pray this prayer tonight and we'll pray for a very long time. He said, oh Lord, show me today that which will cause my lifting tomorrow. Mm. Mm. Show me today that which will cause my lifting tomorrow. And I prayed that prayer with so much passion. I did not even know what I was doing to myself. Mm. So when I was done praying that prayer, after the old night, I went home. The next night, I would have a dream. And I saw myself, I woke up in an open field. My head was rested on a pillow on this dream. Now, I'm, now this, this, is, this is very important now. Mm -hmm. These are like the pillars of my life. So I, 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 I would rest my head on a pillow, and I wake up in this dream. And as I rest my head on the pillow, I, I wake up and I'm like, where am I? It's a dream. Oh, I'm like, where am I? Nobody is here. Everywhere is ah, this place is an open field. So I'm trying to figure out where I am. Then I notice that the, the pillow my head is on is very soft. Mm. I turn to look, look at the pillow, and I was resting my head on a lion. Wow, a very big lion. And I'm like, Lord Jesus, help me. So the lion, because I was sleeping, the lion was asleep. So I, I woke up and I got up slowly. <laughs> my plan was. <laughs> Since this lion is still sleeping, let me escape. <laughs> so I stood up, up, I was trying to tiptoe. And then since like the lion was a few seconds after me, like when I woke up, the lion now woke up. <laughs> but the lion was not looking at my direction. The lion seemed to be matching and mirroring what I was doing. So the lion too was looking around like, where am I? After a while, the lion turned and looked at me. I was about to run and began to pursue me. So in this dream, the lion would chase me everywhere. I would try to run away. But when the lion catches up with me, it doesn't injure me. It doesn't hurt me, you know. And this kept going on. I was scared. I, at the point, I was begging the lion, just leave me alone, you know. And then I woke up. So when I woke up, I began to pray. Holy Ghost, what does this mean? And the Holy Ghost said to me, the lion represents your greatness. Mm. And I'm like, okay, wow. what, I, I'm trying to, what does that mean? And then the Holy Ghost said, you are running away from your greatness. And I tried to understand. This took me days to finally get and the Holy Ghost said, the little things you have despised. Mm. You feel like comedy should be a by the side thing. You know, it complements your preaching. But your lifting is there. Mm. The little, you know, as small as this, you know, we play with scriptures every day in the room. Me and my friends, we joke about, we reply ourselves with scriptures. I didn't know it was something that would announce me. I never expected mm -hmm. something that minute mm. to be my announcement. You know, mm. I had been organizing conferences for years. Nobody knew me. You know, I had been, I, I was, I was convening the annual My Purpose, My Life conference. I had been, I had been doing all that for years. I just felt like there was a blueprint to ministry. I felt like there was a blueprint, you know, when you come out, you evangelize, you do one miracle, you go viral, you know, you are, you are a man of God. You just do it <laughs> The way Papa Idaosa did it, he went to a market, healed a cripple, crowd followed him, he raised the dead, crowd followed him. So I felt like that was a prototype, like that was a blueprint to follow, yeah. you know? And so it just, it just, it just, when the Holy Ghost began to tell me these things, it took me almost one year for the Holy Ghost to convince me. And then I tried to do something little and he breathes on it. And, you know, even sometimes, it's still, it's, it's still, it's so funny how even at this point, it still catches up with me sometimes, I'm like, I'm a comedian, I'm a man of God. <laughs> you know, I don't feel like doing comedy, you know. I don't feel like, but, 
Ah, it just, it just, it, it's beautiful to know that we are nothing but we are just, we are the clay and he's the potter. Yeah. And we cannot tell him, why have you made me so yeah. you know? So that, yes. that yeah. I, I think it's so beautiful because we can actually um, impact lives, become references, become uh, agents of change in whatever God has called us to do. It doesn't have to follow a conventional pattern, the way mm -hmm. in order to um, follow, as you said, probably the mainline ministry of preaching, being on a platform. You can't tell how many lives have been transformed from all of these kids that uh, has been done, from even the comedy. To me, it's also like, it's a ministry. Mm -hmm. but it's, a, it's a ministry reaching out and changing lives. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes, when you see young people see God tilting them in a certain direction that they feel, this is not what I want. Yeah, yeah exactly. There's a battle between what I think I want and what God is leading me to. But ultimately, I, I think it's, it's wisdom to always yield to what God is leading us. That's where our fulfillment lies. So another thing I want to say is, I think um, our generation, thank God for the generation of, of daddy and the power they will I think our generation would need to be more open in as much as we are discerning, more open to the reality that it's diversity of spirits, diversity mm -hmm. of administrations, but one yeah. spirit. Mm -hmm. Diversity of gifts, rather, diversity of administration, but one spirit, one mm -hmm. baptism, one Lord. You know, because there was a point in my life after this comedy blew up, I fell into the category of too spiritual for the worldly industry and to canal for the spiritual industry. I don't know if I don't I don't know if I'm explaining this well. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like I, I didn't have friends among the Christian circles because some of them felt like what he's doing might be blasphemous. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. these are canal people. These are not these people. This one, this ones don't ascend into our parents. <laughs> and then your colleagues in the canal industry feel like I beg Bible, 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 Bible. You know, so you're in a world of your own. <laughs> For the canal, yeah, no, no, so that, that that was very weird for me. It was it was mm -hmm. there was a phase like that for me. Um, I think with time, people began to accept me, especially when um, now there are people whose minds changed about me the moment that his hand was involved in my life. <laughs> a lot lot of people now say, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> Baba, okay, it. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. so that helped me a lot, you know, I had to run back to my roots and say, I'm a son here, yeah, okay. I'm a son here, yeah. <laughs> before they think I'm, I'm blaspheming or something, no, it's the gospel I'm preaching, you know, you know, so I think that, that when Baba's hand came on my life and it was public, that helped me, people now said, oh, it's Baba's son, okay, uh -huh. so stuff like that. <laughs> Okay, beautiful. Now, in all of these experiences, for many young people that are transiting through a phase of purpose, a phase of recovery, and then probably, probably they have a little idea of what God has called them to. They are going through difficult times, they are going through challenging times, and it looks like they are laboring, but they are not seeing the fruit of it. What can you say, or, um, or is, or was, like it was or is, let me use is, the secret has kept you going level of success after level of success when it looked like you were working but you were not really seeing the fruits and the impact but you kept on doing it what can you say is this was or is the secret that kept you going i think the first thing that every young christian should go for after salvation is wisdom some people say knowledge you know some people say knowledge you know mm -hmm. but jesus says Whosoever heareth these words of mine and doeth them, like into a wise man. Mm -hmm. So I define wisdom as hearing God and doing what he says. Mm -hmm. So, which is also divine. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, uh, and it's also a point or a proof of sonship. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So I think what every Christian should go for after salvation is the ability to be led of the Spirit of God. That personal relationship where you walk with God as a man who walks with his friend. Because at a point, now, I started doing comedy in 2012. And I came on the limelight in 2021. And that, that's nine years. So at a point, 
at, okay, at a point, it wasn't, well, it was filmmaking basically, not even comedy. But at a point, what kept me was not the desire to hit the limelight. It was the conviction that I was fulfilling purpose. Mm. So even if those short films were touching four lives, three lives, you know, two lives, I feel I was convinced I am where I am. It is now left for God to bless the work of yeah. the work he has given me. But true. there was no doubt as to you know, there was no doubt. Mom was calling me just now. There was no doubt as to as to am I doing what God sent me to do. Mm. It it was now, you know, AW tools I would say there's always the part of God and there's the part of man. You know, so for me, my part was obeying it instruction and and my part is obeying instruction and i have actually obeyed the instruction do you understand so it was now left for god it was now left for god to it was now left for god to bless the work that i am doing so what kept me was conviction divine direction you know conviction divine direction was one particular thing that kept me you know um so I think it takes it takes divine direction to separate yeah. between delay and patience. Mm. Mm. And because it's, it's a very there's a very thin line between delay and patience. Mm. So you might be in the wilderness for 40 days as destined by God. It's another thing to be there for 40 years as caused by your own mistakes. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. so, so that thin line between delay and patience, the Bible says they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They that wait upon the Lord. So if your waiting is not upon the Lord, as you wait, you waste too. <laughs> uh -huh. So it has to be uh -huh. it has to be waiting upon the Lord. So so mm -hmm. I think that divine direction is what helps you differentiate, you know. Am I am I am I going through the process or am I experiencing delay? I think many young people really need to uh, appreciate that because some of them in, the, in that waiting period or in that season, they may turn the tower. They may just feel I've labored, I'm working, but the fruits of my labor is not showing. Mm. And meanwhile, as you said, it's just uh, it's a, it's a, it's a season that is culminating into an eruption based mm. on God's own timing. And I think this is this virtue of patience is so needed in this generation because there's this urgency everyone yes, wants to yes yes because yes, yes, yes. everywhere oh can't you see this person is everywhere on social media yes the compar the comparison yes, yes comparison yes. is so heavy uh, and it's it's so prevalent in our time and our generation so i think many young people need to understand that look there's a process to destiny also mm -hmm. there's a process i must enjoy the journey enjoy the process that's where fulfillment ultimately lies. I, I think that that's very, very good what you're sharing. And, and another thing too, sir, you know, there is rigidity in strategy. Mm -hmm. Some people are too rigid to be... A, a, a versatile Holy Spirit. I don't know how to put it. Yeah. Some, some people are more rigid than God. They are holier <laughs> than God. You know, I, I knew people who said, Social media never, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but now they've opened, they've opened it. they're on Instagram now. Yeah. <laughs> now that yeah. time has gone, you know. Uh, so there were Christians who there are Christians who always fight technology when it comes. Mm -hmm. Instead of thinking of how can this, you know, how can this be an advantage? Just like mm -hmm. when the Bible when the Bible says the children of darkness are in their generation wiser mm -hmm. than the children mm -hmm. of light. You know, there are people who are going to fight technology instead of you know thinking of how they can use it you know to advance the gospel yeah. the children mm -hmm. of darkness they hear that somebody is going to the moon they are thinking of how they can use it to influence cultures yeah. for the kingdom of darkness but mm -hmm. we see it and we are like ha ah, this world is not my home so i think rigidity too affects a lot of people because it's delayed beautiful so how do you how do you manage um in recent years, the impact, the publicity, the attention, definitely you go out as, as, a, as an influencer and then attention everywhere. Because that's another area many people need to know how to manage. 
So how do you manage all of the attention that comes your way from young people, from older people? Oh, maybe you are going traveling or something. How, how, do you, how do you navigate through all of that? Okay, so you cannot be too prepared for it. That's one, that's one truth. You cannot be too prepared for recognition because you've not been there before. You can try your best, but it's not like you've gone there, you know how it is, so you know how to prepare against it the second time. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. the first time it came, even as even as doctrinal, as biblical as I was, as Christian as I was, I think I made some mistakes. I think I'm managing it now better, but the Lord helped me manage my carelessness at the early stage. Yes, the Lord helped yeah. me manage, because my mom would tell me, it's like you used to forget gets that you're popular <laughs> you know because <laughs> because we can be on set and people just they are different different they are different perspectives to to recognition and stardom you cannot come out of your street and anything you want to buy the price is bloated <laughs> you know, and it doesn't make any sense like uh, uh not be me they not be you they use my data uh, 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 uh. like how much is bread you're telling me uh, uh, you, uh, this one like, uh, 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 uh. You know, so everything. Is, yeah, so so in the beginning stage, I didn't I didn't manage it well. So, but it took it took months, maybe up to two years, and I began to realize that oh, not everyone smiling at you really loves you. Yeah. You know, some people some people are trained wrongly. Some people are from damaged backgrounds. So their own ideology to recognition is bringing another person down. Mm -hmm. You know, uh -huh. some people want to just. They want to poke you, get you angry, and then record you. Mm. You know, so you have to be very, very careful. Yeah. You know, not everybody who is smiling at you is for you. So uh, it will take you time. It's good to build a community before it comes. Mm. It's good to because <laughs> you can't trust people. Even the ones who will disguise as saints around you might just be there because of the class that is around you at the point. So yeah. it's good to have a community of prayer partners you know my friends from way back are still my friends my prayer partners from way back are still my prayer partners they may not be as popular as i am but they are my prayer partners they are my friends you know uh -huh. so i think that for me that's that's the way i manage it now and i have learned the value of privacy more now privacy that's beautiful yes mm -hmm. yes so and I, I i do not necessarily have to be online i do not have to post i don't post because i have to post you know, I don't just put out something because I, the quality is as important as the consistency for me. You know, because it, to build a building can take a long time, but to destroy it, just one strike of matches with foil, you can, one post can ruin what people have believed about you. Yeah. You know, you can make one mistake and then God forgives, but human beings hardly, hardly, yeah. hardly <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so I, I just learned to be more careful now. That's good, that's good. So now, in, in, still, still in that context, let, let's swap a little bit into relationship. You're a young man uh, in the limelight, uh, definitely a lot of attention. All those calling La Coco, La Coco. Ah, it's La Coco into something. You know? Yeah, La Coco is somewhere. Sorry, you want to make me shy. <laughs> yeah, La Coco into somewhere. How, do you, how have you managed? Because as you are seeing vision as a man of God, you are seeing for you also. They must have been seen for you with so many people. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that the, the Lord said. Uh, last, uh, I think last year, yeah, somebody got angry at me. Is that? Somebody got angry at me. The person almost reported me to the police. So. Uh, the lady, yeah, now, why, why am I seeing you in my dream? Why are you telling me? Why are you telling me I'm your wife? Why are you harassing me? <laughs> okay, what would be the police statement now that you saw me in your dream? <laughs> as mommy, as your mommy Gio. I on the street, your mommy Gio. <laughs> as mommy Gio. <laughs> well, so, so how do you translate it? How do you manage all of that cloud, the attention, you are set or you are in public space, you are in events, or just generally, how's it been? Uh, more generally it has been I, i'm i try my best to be as civil as possible you know i try my best to be as collected and calm as possible because people have different reactions you know i went out i went out to the mall some days ago i was at the mall in delta state and 
there was there was there was a lady that that held me and was she works she works in the shop you know and i didn't wear face mask i just came out to buy something i just wanted to rush in and the lady held me and was shouting i was can i do a video can i do a picture can i pray for me can i hold you please can i hug you can i just can i just hug you i'm like no i don't hug i don't i'm not hug i'm not hug. Just, <laughs> okay. you know and then the next thing please can i do a video i said no don't do a video because you can do a video now and the next thing hi guys meet zoala Kate. he's been asking me out i'm thinking about it you guys think i should say yes <laughs> before you start correcting they've caught the video they posted yeah. it yo yo yeah. no yeah. so um I, I think it's natural for anybody that gets um into the limelight into recognition you know but the, I, I i don't know if it's safe to say what you are not looking for will not look for you <laughs> that i don't know if it's safe to say that too because i still know that some people are agents of satan who, who come directly for people you know uh -huh. but in my own experience so far so good i would say that 80 percent of the time if you if, if you if you move with discipline with a discipline structure and uh -huh, what you're not uh, because because people are very weird ladies are very difficult to understand you know so <laughs> i'm very careful so that i don't get accused of leading anybody on mm. you know so because I, I learned over time not to even show care you know, not to show if you if you have a problem, you I, I have female pastors that will I will reach you to that can talk to you. <laughs> because you can just show attention and somebody says, Oh, you but you were caring for me, you were showing me. <laughs> you can be in a relationship but you don't even know. They will date you, they will, they will date you. <laughs> you will not know that they are dating you. So yeah, so I'm I'm extremely very, very careful now. Yeah. That's very, so very, very, very cool. Very cool. Now, I know many people, many of the people that are looking up to you. So when is Lakoko going to manifest? When is Zuala Kate going to manifest? Who is this? Who is this Mom Gio? Who is this Mom Gio? Uh, so um, I, uh, I want to believe that very soon they will see, they will know the Mom Gio. Very back, soon. Back. Uh, God's grace, now. <laughs> <laughs> Since all the cats are be looking for Mommy Gio, <laughs> but I believe I believe that Mommy Gio is on the way, and it's sooner than later. <laughs> I believe that it's sooner than later. So, we are going to see Mommy Gio very soon. <laughs> That's what I, I believe. Yes, we are also eagerly waiting. But the Mommy Gio concept, though, yeah. the Mommy Gio concept actually was coined out from my personal life experience. So I used to be one of those spiritual boys that wanted spiritual content and canal container. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. Yeah, but that was my kind of that was for many years I used to be that spiritual boy that wanted spiritual content, you know, be deep inside. But when we look at you from outside, be fair to behold, you know, be, be, be lovely to behold. Let's let's look at you like Rebecca. <laughs> So I, that, that that was that was where I coined out the whole Mommy Geo content. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think I think I think I think I grew past I think I grew past that a little bit. Although not really old, because my Mommy Geo is still very beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> no, most most of the Mommy Geos are always beautiful. So so I think that is uh... No when they I know when they see my Mommy Geo they will confirm they'll me. Ah they'll be doing ah, they'll that. Confirm. Okay. I can't disappoint them. They're all waiting. They're all waiting. They're all waiting. <laughs> So everybody get ready very soon, Mommy Gio will soon be on there. Yeah. So yeah, so by the grace of God. By the grace of God. Amen. Good good news. That's awesome. Now as we begin to wrap up, we have just a few more minutes. It's been an amazing time just learning from you and you sharing your experiences. Now I know there are many young people out there um, who desire uh impactful life. They want to live an impactful life, they want to be uh, uh they want to be contributive in this adventure of life. They want to be successful in whatever God has called them. Now, from your own adventure, from your experience, from a place of knowledge or wisdom, what can you say are some critical success buttons that a young person should naturally hold on to if he desires to have an impactful journey in life? What are those one, two, three success buttons you may want to share with you? Um. So first of all, I I feel like um, it is it is 
vague to pursue money or pursue fame because I, I, I think fame and money are byproducts of impact. That, 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 that's the way I, I always saw life from the days of Covenant University and it worked for me. You know, money and fame are byproducts of impact. Um, the first the first success button I will talk about is relationship with God. Yeah. You, no matter how much we study, no matter how many books we read, no matter no matter how much we we will always know in part. So yeah. long as we are in this vessel, this flesh, we will always know in part, professor in part. Mm -hmm. We cannot know everything so long as we are in this flesh. So there is nothing more advantageous than connecting with the wow. father of all spirits, the yeah. one who, who is all-knowing. Yeah. Uh, because, because I have seen my biggest success come from the weirdest instructions. Hmm. You, you know, I never wanted to do stand-up comedy. A popular stand-up comedian in this country called me. I had a relationship with him as a mentor, and he called me to come to Lagos for something which he was organizing. You know, but I submitted my entry, and he didn't like it. You know, but he didn't tell me. I got to Lagos already, and he didn't take my calls again. So I was very frustrated. I was, I was in my auntie's house. I was very frustrated. I was down, and that was December. So I said, you know what? I told my auntie, I said, what do you want to do? I said, I'm going back to worry. I want to go and attend Shiloh. So I left because I, I didn't have money on me. So I wanted to go back home. And then what? There's a, there's a, there's a church near my house where I could watch a viewing center where I could watch. So I went back home. And I attended Shiloh. This was 2020 December, the year of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And I followed Shiloh for the number of days. And I made up one decision. I just made up my mind. I said, Jesus, I would waste my life on you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, did, I, wasn't, I wasn't saying hey, other people's own have work, my own will work. No, I said, let me be the first wasted product from Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let me mm -hmm. be the first wasted life on Jesus. Mm. I don't care if this thing is working or is not working, but I want to live this life at the end of it. When I meet my maker, I say, ah, now you waste my life. Mm. You know, that was my decision. And the Lord began to lead me to go for soul winning. And I went for crusade. I went to organize my first crusade in the River Rhine area, Ugbijo, in Wari, Delta said across the high sea. I went to organize my first crusade. And I came back from the crusade. Three days after, I was lying on my bed at home, my mother's house. And the Lord said to me, now go back to the comedy skits you've been doing for years. Mm. And then he said to me, he said, shoot them on January 30th. Now the crusade was January 13th. This was January 16th. The Lord said, shoot this skit January 30th. Ah, I said, okay. I wrote it down. And then I forgot. Just went about my life. On January 30th, I remembered what the Lord told me at 4 p.m. And I said, today, is January 30th. The Lord gave me an instruction because uh -huh. after the crusade, we had so many miracles, but I didn't hear God tell me anything about my life. The only thing I heard was January 30th, go and do skits. Now, this is 4 p.m. I <laughs> called my people. I said, I called my, my people in church. I said, you know what? We need to go and do skits. They said, it's already late now. Let's do tomorrow. I said, no, God said today. We must do today. So that was how they came to my house. I remember they got to my house. It was already 4.45. And then I got my coats and everything. And I bought that coat because of that competition in December. <laughs> I didn't, yeah, I didn't buy it because of skit. I bought it because of the competition. You know, so I got the coat. And I literally have a Bible, a, a clean Bible that I use. And then they were in my house. We were looking for the Bible. Bible was missing. So I ran into my mother's room and I saw her old Bible. And I, I picked my mother's old Bible. And it was five o'clock already, like till five. And I was like, let's go, let's go. They said, okay, let's go. Can we use this one? I said, it's comedy and anything goes. So we went to our location where we used to shoot a quiet place. When we got to that place, we were about to start shooting. And somebody said, Pastor, I said, what? I said, you, did, you forgot your shoe. You're on slippers. I said, ah. <laughs> I forgot you. I, I said, you know what? Let's shoot like that. When we shot, the mm -hmm. same Bible that I forgot, and the same shoe that I forgot were the reasons the very first blog carried the videos. Mm. So it became, wow. it became the most, it was so unique. They had never seen a fake pastor on coat <laughs> and slippers. So the first thing they commented was, look at his slippers. Look at his, who is this one again? 
on this internet? Where is it from? How can you wear a coat and wear slippers? And that thing was not my intelligence. It was not my creativity. Mm -hmm. It was a mistake that became a miracle. Mm -hmm. So for me, relationship with God is number one. You know, relationship with God, because God is all knowing. Yeah. That's the first that's the first button as far as i'm concerned the second button is prayer you yeah know, i don't know how i don't know how it is for me but whenever i pray and i pray for long hours i always have visible testimonies to share you know so, so relationship with god fervent fervency in prayer life fervency in prayer life and then knowledge knowledge about you know, nothing is mystical. Instagram is not mysterious. YouTube is not mysterious. You know, Facebook is not mysterious. If you will settle down to understand how the algorithm works, it will work for you. You know, mm. there is no village people anywhere that can fight your understanding. <laughs> you know, so after prayer for me is knowledge. Whatever you are doing, know what you are doing. Because it's funny how you have you have somebody of another religion is the highest, um, um, highest, um, the best graduating student of a class, and there are Christians there. Mm. And when you go and study their lifestyle, that guy actually committed more. He studied more, and yeah. it it shows the perfection of God mm. that He causes His rain to fall on the just and the yeah. unjust. So, if mm. the Buddhist sow seed to grow, if yeah. the Christian does not sow, nothing, nothing to grow. Yeah. The rain doesn't have anything to fall on. Mm -hmm. So, we cannot take away the place of work. Yeah. So, relationship with God, prayer, work. I think. Those basic things for me. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you so much. I, I believe uh, many young people connected, those that will watch this and kids, and uh, you know, it's just the little, little, little things that uh, become so striking. Like one of the major things I picked from your sharing tonight is God can turn your mistakes to a miracle. Mm. That, that, yes, that sir. I just picked that as you were talking. I said, hmm, that is so true. Mm. So God can turn something that's supposed to be a mistake and it makes it a miracle. This God just, all things just work together when God is involved for good. Mm. Mm. I, I want to thank you so much for, for sparing out this few minutes thank to you. share with you. So God. much, sir. Thank you so uh, much, sir. It's such, it's such a blessing. And well done for all the things you do. Well Bless done God. for all of the things you do. You, you crack us up. Most times we just put you on a laughing and everybody and then. Uh, and I laugh in the spiritual space, and you laugh. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. I must commend you sincerely and keep it up. And I know definitely this is just the beginning. There are many, many more explosive things that God has in store. Amen. We're, Amen. Gonna, we're gonna see all of them turn to turn to fruition. You know this time. Amen. 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 I, I want to pray as a man of God to pray for the people that are connected. Just pray that God will um, will will, will um, turn their visions and dreams to reality. God will guide them. God will open up His purpose for the lives of many young people who may not even know what they want to do with their lives. Just a word of prayer briefly to the people connected and those that are connected before we close. Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every viewer here tonight. Amen. Thank you for everyone who is connected via different devices. Lord, I thank you for their lives. I thank you because they are not here by coincidence. I thank you because this is divine orchestration. Yes. Lord, I pray for every one of them that their lives will be an expression of your will. It will be a reflection of your purpose and the definition of your intent. I pray, oh God, that your hand will come mightily upon them and to culminate into the manifestation of their God-given dreams. Amen. I pray for everyone who is at the verge of throwing in the towel. I pray that the Holy Ghost will comfort them. I pray Amen. that the breath of God that giveth inspiration yeah. will be found within them and they will be inspired to get up and Amen. keep pushing. I pray from now on that the best of their past will be the least of their future. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. I Amen. pray that for everyone that desires the same grace that worked for me will work for them. Amen. I pray that we are going to have more kingdom stars yeah. in the body of Christ. I Amen. pray that more celebrities would rise. I pray that more voices would rise. Amen. I pray that in the army of Christ for this my generation, the soldiers will not be few. Amen. 
I pray, oh God, that you will raise more men from the cave of Adulam. You will raise more generals, oh God. In this army, oh God, the soldiers will not be few. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that every mistake, every error that would have taken them from the path of righteousness, that would have taken them from the path of destiny fulfillment, will be averted by the mercy of God in the name of Jesus. I pray the mercies of God prevail over everyone here tonight. And I pray that in time to come, we will have testifiers from this platform. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Thank Hallelujah. you so much for, for, for all of the blessings, the prayer, the sharing and everything. Thank you so much. Such a blessing. And thank you and happy Easter again. Uh, please you, show us love, love to your mom and uh, love to mommy Jill. Definitely, and, uh... <laughs> she will be here. She will hear, definitely. She will hear, sir. And thank you so much. It's such a blessing to have spoken with you tonight. And, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll and after you start, send me, send, me well to, send me well to daddy, send me well to pastor, <laughs> pastor love. <laughs> and and you, know, you know, I knew you since. <laughs> I knew you since, so, but I didn't have access. <laughs> ah, I knew you since. It has been It has been long. <laughs> I knew you since, but, but at God's time, we yeah, thank God for everything. It's such a blessing, sincerely. I appreciate yes, sir. you. Thank yes, sir. you. Thank you. So and I was at your wedding. I was at your wedding. Are you serious? We were part of the students that came to Colier Rice. Yes, at the reception. <laughs> you know, it was on the field. Now I, I was in school then. Now it was That's on the field. Years, I, I was years ago. Yeah, so I ate your wedding rice actually. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say. It. <laughs> so I went. I went to wedding rice. But definitely, you eat my own. Praise God. Yes, sir. Well, thank you so much. So nice talking to you. Same here, sir. Same here, sir. God bless you. Enjoy your, the rest of the day. Amen. Amen. Have a great night, sir. God thank bless you so much. You. Sir. All right, guys. Thank you for connecting yeah. with us. All right. God bless you all.